welcome back to True Life TV. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Today's video will be about Chloe May Loy. Chloe May Loy was stabbed to death in Greenwich, South East London by a serial abuser of women. Serial abuser Tay Francis, aged 40, killed Chloe May Loy, aged 23, in July 2020 while at a hotel room at the Holiday Inn Hotel in Greenwich. Previously, he already had rape and violence convictions. At the murder trial, jurors heard that the steroid abuser texted his lawyer a picture of Miss Loy lying dead on the bed, adding, I've killed my girlfriend, before he proceeded to dial 999. Officers and medical staff arrived, but were unable to enter the hotel room at first, because Francis refused to open the door. Francis attempted to escape by climbing out of the bedroom window, but fell onto a roof below while stopping the rescue personnel from entering. Francis was hanging from a ledge outside, having thrown a small rucksack and a suitcase out of the window. He had cuts to his body and had recently taken steroids. He was eventually dealt with by the emergency services, and he was put into induced coma and taken to hospital. Chloe May was discovered with a knife wound to the neck and was pronounced dead at the scene. A set of knives was discovered in the room, with a receipt indicating they had been purchased just a week before the attack from a store in Sutton. Prosecutor Kate Lumsden, QC, told jurors that there was no question that Francis had killed her, but that they should consider whether he was suffering from a mental illness at the time. She added that Mr. Francis was an aggressive, self-obsessed man who used steroids. She added that steroids have a variety of adverse side effects, with aggression and paranoia being two among them. Francis, of no known address, was convicted guilty of murder by a majority of 10 to 2 after admitting manslaughter with diminished responsibility. He was jailed for a minimum term of 23 years on December 6, 2021. Tay Francis, formerly known as Ashley Wyatt, had a history of convictions for violence against women, according to the court. In 2002, he had been sentenced to six years in prison and placed on the sex offenders register for two rapes, kidnapping and possessing a belated article. He was also sentenced to prison in 2013 and given a non-molestation order after assaulting another woman whom he threatened to stab in the neck. He was also convicted of criminal damage following a dis domestic disturbance two years later to that. In 2016, he was given a conditional discharge after assaulting an ex-girlfriend. Chloe May Loy met this sick individual while working at a pub near Croydon College where she was a student and they soon became friends. She informed her parents, Maxine and Danny Loy, that he was 26 years old and a student, when in reality he was actually far older than that and he was also not a student. It has also been revealed that Francis had previously assaulted Miss Loy in 2017 and he threw her in a wheelie bin. He was found guilty and sentenced to 20 weeks in prison with a restraining order. Prosecutor Miss Lumsden added that her parents persuaded Chloe May to leave Mr Francis, but Chloe May claimed that if she left him, he would go on to harm her parents. In an emotional statement after the tragedy, Chloe May's parents said that Chloe May was only 23 at the time of her death and she is missed by her family and friends. We all miss her bubbly personality and she was also always the life and soul of the party and she always tried to see the best in everyone. She was like our little china doll. At the age of 23, Chloe May had already endured five years of suffering at the hands of Tay Francis when all did she seek was actually just love and commitment from him. Tay tricked her into this world. He lied to her from the very beginning lied about his age, his job and the fact that he was a student at the local college. He tried to manipulate and control Chloe May from the outset. He took her away from her family and friends and physically and emotionally abused her. They added that even though Chloe May is no longer here with us, she still exists. Tay has taken Chloe May's life, but in doing so he has also ruined ours. We will never be able to experience her love and happiness ever again. Okay, now my thoughts on this story are well, my first thought is that Tay is a proper scumbag and I hope anyone even similar to him never leaves prison and I feel like prison is the place for people like this. 
But saying that, it looks like the prison system actually needs a reform because this guy had been sentenced two, three times previously as well and nothing actually happened. It just sounds like he was even getting worse. And surely, if he received any type of rehabilitation, he wouldn't have gone out and done something like this. But that's not to say he wasn't just completely sick and twisted and nothing could actually save the situation. But I do believe things like probation and stuff like that should have kept a stronger eye on him as someone who can do this once can definitely do it again and especially for the crimes he was convic convicted of I feel like they should have taken it a bit more serious to actually keep an eye on him this case actually only further highlights the need for domestic violence to have more awareness around it as well as more support systems so these could be in the form of like helplines that are heavily advertised how many times do you see gambling adverts advertised but you never see like a domestic violence one advertised to the same scale at least it's a problem that a lot of women are facing and I feel like a lot of them are scared to talk out and if they had like an avenue to go down where they can anonymously report these things and actually get help for them I feel that would be very beneficial not just to them but any other woman suffering the same thing another thing I took from the case is that kids need to be further educated on steroids steroids is very common especially with the rise of body conscious Instagram generation and the fact that a lot of kids are actually taking them can show that you know this can lead to heavy mental health effects everyone knows about roid rage and looks like this guy might have been suffering the effects of roid rage and a lot of kids actually just believe that taking steroids and stuff like that would just help them get a bit more hench to say but doesn't tell you what it actually does to your insides as well as what it does to your mental health um, to add I'd say that this is another case too close to home for me and the fact that there's people and well sickos like this walking around the streets while well, I've got family members also walking the streets it just doesn't sit right with me and I feel like from now well from the case anyways it should have been the case before but the prison system and the probation systems need to keep a close eye on people like this that have been released back into the public especially those who have committed crimes like this in the past a lot of the times these killers usually don't have a criminal past but this guy I feel like it could have been prevented he could have actually been given a larger sentence maybe a sentence with more rehabilitation in it but it's all in hindsight now and nothing can be done as unfortunately Chloe Maylo has, has passed away now I'd like to offer my condolences to her family and I'd like to say RIP to Chloe Maylo as this was just a tragic crime and I hope nothing like this ever happens again